Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Wendy. Today we're going to be doing two Dollar Tree and 99 cent store Christmas farmhouse DIYs. And we're going to start with this frame that is from Dollar Tree. It's about 12 inches by 8 inches, just a little bit under, but it's a cute little picture, but we're going to use it for something else. This basket from Dollar Tree as well and some miniatures, just various miniatures. I wasn't sure what I was gonna use, so I just picked up a few, and I've used these for a couple of different projects now. The trees I actually had, but they have the trees at Dollar Tree as well. And then these 20 count lights that are plug-in, and they're five feet long, so we'll be using that as well. These small ornaments, silver, there's some matte ones in there, and then these medium sized ones. You can't really tell, but they're not the big regular sized um, ornaments, and they come in the tube. Then some Dollar Tree contact paper. You guys have seen this a million times. And some just miscellaneous batting and fiber fill that we'll use as snow. Some different colors of red. I ended up using the Delta Ceram Coat and it's called bright red and you know i never really know exactly what i'm going to use in each of my diys so even though the black paint is there i did not end up using that and also from dollar tree these little yo-yos three beads and a couple of tinsel stems and then from hobby lobby this black and white buffalo check ribbon the regular tools, some E6000 scissors, wire cutters, and my beautiful new glue gun that stands all by itself. And then this is some Reynolds foil wrap. It's used for crafting, but you could totally use regular heavy duty aluminum foil if you don't have this. I just happen to have this as I do a lot of my craft supplies. And then also some acrylic silver paint. Um, this was my backup plan in case the foil didn't work. So I'm first going to take my basket and cover it in the contact paper. This was just an extra piece I had, but just it doesn't matter what the pattern is because we're going to paint over it. It just gave me a solid base so that the little openings in the basket wouldn't show. So I'm just going to lay it on top of the contact paper and rub it all the way around so that it sticks and then at the sides I just cut slits on each of the corners and then pulled the bottom piece up and then folded over the flaps kind of like you would a Christmas present and so I did that for both sides and then at the top where it's folded over I'm just gonna cut that all the way around so that it's even with the edge and it doesn't really have to be perfect because it's going to be covered by the frame and a bow at the top. So we're just going to cover it with a couple of coats of that red ac acrylic paint. And then after I do a couple of coats of that, and you want to make sure that it dries completely in between, I'm going to take the frame and take everything out. And then the cardboard piece I'm going to use as a template to cut out my foil and all I do is just place it on top and then using my fingernail I'm just gonna indent where I want to cut it so that I so that it fits into the frame and then just cut that out and then once I get that done I'm going to make a little template from the glass just to give an idea and I can see through it um, what where I want to mark it because I'm gonna cut out and make this a little inside um, TV frame, I guess you would call it. So I'm doing the straight lines first, and so I want them to be the same width on three of the sides, and I'm just using the back of a pen so that I can make that indention. And then to make the round corners, I'm gonna use the bottom of that red Delta Ceram Coat paint bottle, and then using my Zacto knife, I'm going to cut that out all the way around. And on the corners, you, you know, I'm freehanding it, so just be slow and careful and try not to bend it. I actually made a dent in it with my fingernail, but it was okay because that was the side I was gonna use um, under a piece of cardstock, so it wouldn't show. But just make sure it's all nice and straight. 
and then clean your glass off with some Windex or window cleaner. And then, because this is gonna be on the inside, and so I placed my foil there, and then I got some uh, black cardstock, and I'm going to try and figure out where I wanna place that so that it looks like a television screen, and these will be where the controls are. So I'm gonna place that under the foil, which is gonna be the first, you'll see that in front of the, or behind the glass, that'll be in front of the foil. So I put some hot glue down and make sure that that's adhered. And then I wanna put it in the frame, but there's not a lot of places to glue, so we don't want any glue showing to the front. So you just have to take a little stick of some sort or a skewer or anything and make a little pile of glue, a small one, and then stick it in there and then place your dots so that it doesn't show from the front. Then I'm pu pushing my little tabbies down and those little guys are pretty cheap, so be careful with that. And then using the my scissors, I'm gonna split apart the yo-yos and take the strings out. And then I'm gonna use two of them for the knobs. And I have a little too much paint here, but this is that silver acrylic paint. And I placed it on a little stem um, so that I could turn it and stick it into the styrofoam so that it could dry and I actually had to give this a couple of coats as well It's better if you do the lighter thinner coats instead of globbing it on like I did because I actually had to start over with that one so now I'm gonna take my miniature uh, ornaments and pull off the tops where the hanger would would feed through and then using my wire cutters I'm gonna pop that little top off and it will it on the smaller ones they it just pops off real easily the larger ones are more of a, a tougher a different kind of plastic so you kind of have to uh, chop it a little bit more uh, and then I just sanded it so it would have a flat edge and then I took hot glue as well as e6000 and placed it at the bottom of the basket, which would be the side of the basket, but it's the bottom of what we're making, which is a TV, if you didn't already know. So to make those permanent, make sure you do use the E6000. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take my Zacto knife and cut along a couple of these areas, the weave of the fake plastic basket, and what I'm trying to do is make a hole large enough to fit the end of my cord through because on those mini lights, the, the light Christmas light sets, the plug is kind of big and so you have to make a, a pretty large hole to stick that through. So I'm gonna do that now and stick it through so that this will be able to light up. And then once you feed it through and you'll cut off that excess uh, contact paper and then just start scotch taping the lights to where they're facing forward and as far forward without going over the edge as you can and I'm going to do that all the way around the opening and they're very crinkly when you first pull them out so just a tip if you just stretch them they stay straight so you can work with them a lot easier now i'm just taking the batting and i'm going to do little dots of glue all the way around so that it covers up all the mechanism of the lights and also the back and none of the basket will be showing and so this gives us our backdrop also for our little village or scene from the TV screen. And I'm not sure that I mentioned, but the on the ornaments for the little feet of the TV, you want the large ones in the front and the smaller ones in the back so that it sits tilted with the shape of the basket so that it looks like a TV. So once you get this all covered up and you wanna just tuck in the sides so that there's nothing really straight going on in there and it looks like a snow flurry you're gonna figure out how you want to set up your scene and I just pulled out different items and the little people that I thought would work best in here and once I got it figured out I hot glued it all down if anything is crooked or doesn't sit straight just tuck some batting under it to make it straight 
I covered the bases of the trees so that you couldn't see the plastic parts of that and then put all the little people and the signpost and I think it looks super super cute and after I'm done making my scene I'm going to clean off the back of my TV screen because it's going to once it's on there you're done so you want to be sure you don't get any of the glue on the back so now I'm placing my knobs and I think these are so stinking cute and the little beads will be the knobs or the buttons of an old-fashioned TV so it's a make-believe TV so I think there was volume and power and I don't know brightness maybe back in the day so I just used some hot glue and some E6000 and then I'm going to do the same thing with the screen itself and this is going to be placed in the front of the basket to cover everything up and look like a television screen so I put the E6000 and the glue hot glue on there and so when you're doing this part this is where you want to be really careful not to get anything on there which I did but I had to clean everything up and my hot glue was uh, cooling off so that was a rush so you can do do-overs um, now I'm putting it against the basket and the basket itself is has, it's a little bit wider than what the picture frame was so if you just squeeze it because it's very pliable it fit it will fit and it's perfect everyone in my family was loving this and wanted to play with it and that was my daughter's boyfriend so now it's time to make our bow and we're gonna use the fold over method and I'm just going to use three loops on each side so just keep folding it over until you have three little loops on each side and then cut that off and find the center of the bow by folding it over and then pinching it in the middle so that you can put a tinsel stem around it and tie that or twist it in the back so that it stays together and I had a comment from a viewer who was having trouble getting her loops to move around and look like a bow because every time she pulled them apart, apart like I'm doing here, they would just go back in, in the line that they were originally. So if you do have that problem, just um, make the twists a little looser so that the loops can stay where you put them. So here I'm adding two more tinsel stems and these are actually going to serve as the antenna for our TVs. Most young people will not even know what the heck I'm talking about, but go ahead and dovetail the tails of your bow and then hot glue that to the top of the TV. And then the little bow or the ties at the ends of each of the, uh, the sides of the ribbon, that'll cover up any areas that weren't perfect um, as I'm doing here and here it is all cute and I made little tops or tees on the top of the antenna so that if you don't haven't seen a, an antenna before it has a little round piece at the top so that's what that was supposed to look like I think this is so fun and again this is something that just takes me back to my childhood this is very retro. It's not perfect by any means and it's, you know, not meant to be, but I think it's super cute. It's one of my favorites because of the time that it takes me back to and the scene inside. I'm having a, a crush on lights right now just because of the Christmas season and I kind of always have uh, fun with lights, but I, I really like this project and I hope you guys will try something like this. I did find a basket at a, the 99 cent store that was solid instead of the basket weave because if you can find something and it was actually already red too so unfortunately I didn't find it until after I did this project but if you start with that you won't have to deal with the covering with the contact paper or the painting part so that would be a plus definitely.
So for our next project, I'm using three of these boxes that I got from the 99 cent store. And you see there's a large, medium, and small. And they have the lids for all of them. At the Dollar Tree, I got this bucket, the galvanized bucket, flower and garden. Some miscellaneous rocks and marbles just to weigh down the, the bucket because we're, it's gonna be kind of top heavy. And then some bells, I got these also at the 99 cent store, but Dollar Tree has them as well. This is the last of one of those Buffalo Check scarfs from the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna use that to wrap our bucket. Some Hobby Lobby Buffalo Check ribbon. This is $9.99 regular price, but it was half price, so $5, as well as the tinsel stem to wrap our bow. This is a dowel I got from Walmart, and I just keep a few of these on hand. I think they're something like 48 cents or something. And then just some white, black, and gray, or even if you don't have the gray, you can just mix the black and white to get the three different colors. And then our supplies of the wire cutters, scissors, hot glue, and I think that's it. Oh. There's this Zacto knife, which is very important as well. And she's cute and pink too. Anyway, you're gonna take your Zacto knife and just give it an indention on that dowel. Be very careful that you don't cut yourself. Um, but it's pretty soft wood and you can just get it enough so that you can break it where you want it to be. And this is gonna go inside of, or through all of the boxes. So I made a little X with my Zacto knife through the middle of the top lid. And then I'm gonna make another X at each of the, or at one corner of each of these three boxes. So I'm gonna do this for all three boxes, but it makes it go in at an angle. And as you can see, it's gonna be kind of a topsy-turvy present stack. So do that for all three of these. And then we're gonna paint them. I'm gonna do the smallest one black, the middle sized one gray, and then the bottom one will be white. And then we're gonna feed them all through to see and make sure that it works. But I went ahead and made the holes before I painted them so it wouldn't get scratched and messed up. So here's how it looks all stacked. You won't actually know or you know, you'll change the way that they're twisting and stuff once you get it on and you can see what it looks like and how you want them to sit so that you're not looking at the back of the package or um, you know, just make them how they're the cutest once you're done. Now I'm gonna wrap the bucket in the Buffalo Check scarf, and I just put a bead of glue at the top rim and put that in place and just go all the way around and you can move the scarf so that it sits right under that little lip when the glue is still warm and get it so that there's a nice finish. This will probably be covered mostly, but just to give it a good, a good clean finish. We always want that. And then once you get that all the way around, cut off the excess, and then we're going to fold over the edges so that we have a clean edge on the seam there. And then we're gonna glue at the bottom and make that all come together and gather it as we're going.
Now I'm gonna cut a piece of packing foam and I just use my Zacto knife to cut that down so that it'll fit inside. And then I hot glue that to the bottom there and make sure that it's nice and stable because the topsy-turvy part is going to be a little, you know, it's tall, so it could be a little top heavy. And that's what we'll use these marbles and rocks for. And then just shove your dowel down into it. I'm not gonna glue it yet, just because I'm gonna be pulling it in and out to work with it. But on my pail, I'm gonna hang a couple of these little white bells to the side. So using my jute twine, I'm gonna feed that through. And I got a tip from one of the viewers that said, if you wrap the tip of that twine with some scotch tape, it'll feed through a lot easier. And I, I have used that method, so that does help. This one has kind of a big uh, opening, so it was easy and the twine was tightly wrapped. So. Now I'm gonna feed these boxes through and just do one part at a time, do the box and then the lid, and then do all three. And here's what it looks like. I'm not done with the way it's, you know, twisting and stuff. So I'm not gonna glue anything down or, you know, make anything permanent until I finish up and get my, the way I want them sitting. So now I'm gonna make a bow again, and I did three loops on each side, and I did add a longer tail so that that can kind of stream down from the top, and so I just added that to the tinsel stem after I made the bow and gathered it together. And then I'm gonna dovetail the tails and cut those at an angle. And then after I do all four of them, I'm going to use my lighter to singe the ends so that they don't fray. I had to turn off my fan because it kept putting my lighter out. So after I do that, I'm going to attach it to the top of that dowel that's sticking out and that's gonna hide most of it. And I'm just using the tinsel stem to wrap it around because again, I'm not gonna glue anything until the very end. So here I had decided to use an ornament from Dollar Tree. I painted it and edged it and it took me forever, but I end up not using this because I don't like it and I'm gonna pull it off in the end. But at the top of the dowel, I'm gonna take one more of those medium sized ornaments and make a hole with my wire cutters big enough to put at the very top and I place it on the top of the dowel and glue it so that it stays in place. And then I'm gonna add some black ribbon to the bottom white box. And I could have done this before I fed them through, but I wasn't sure what pattern I really wanted. And even when I drew it, I wasn't all the way sure if, if I liked the way it looked. So I finally committed and decided to wrap this with the black ribbon and I just hot glued them on there and I'm gonna make a big bow and I'm gonna do five loops on each side of this one and on this one I'm gonna use the twisting method because that will make it a little fluffier and more like a present bow so in between your thumb and your forefinger you're going to twist it at each turn so every time you make a loop when you come back and you meet in the middle there you're gonna twist it so that the shiny side is up and then the first loop that you did you're gonna twist that over so that it's around both sides I don't know if that makes sense but hopefully you saw it <laughs> so now I'm gonna fluff that one up and put the tinsel stem around the dowel and that's gonna kind of conceal the the mechanism of the dowel in between the two presents so after i get that in there i cut off the excess tinsel stem and then dovetail my edge and he's done and then i'm going to do a second uh bow this one's just white so i'm going to save you from watching me make this one as well that that ribbon i got from walmart and i think it was 348 or something like that Anyway, what I'm doing right here is on the gray box, I'm using my white paint pen and I'm making some polka dots. I didn't get that in the frame, so that's what it looks like when it's done. 
Now on the top one, because it's black, I wanna give it a little bit of white highlights and I'm gonna do some straight lines all the way across. So for the first one, I just used the lid as a guide and then I'm gonna use my ruler as the, the guide for my next lines. And I just, just to add some interest, the it doesn't really show all the way, but I just thought that was a cute touch. So you have different patterns for each of the presents. So now I'm gonna take this bell and deconstruct him. I'm gonna just use the greenery and not the burlap or the pine cones. So I'm gonna hot glue that to the top of the top present. And this, this is always hard to film because it's so tall. So you, you'll be able to see it at the end, but here's where I'm gonna take off and change my mind about what I have covering the front of that. So I had this little plaque, it came off of a Dollar Tree little wooden sign and I had done something else in a previous project, but I just painted that and it gave me a, a, another surface to work with. So using my Silhouette Cameo 3, I printed out or cut out Happy Birthday Jesus. And you can see here that when I took off the transfer tape, it kind of took some of the paint with it, which I should have just waited a little bit longer, but I was completely done with this and had to, and but then changed my mind and went back to do this. So I'm gonna put that all on there and then glue it to the front of the bucket, which will also cover up the area that was showing through from the letters of the garden or the flowers and garden. So now I'm gonna hot glue the dowel into place into that packing foam, get it straight and put it how I want it to show from the front. And then I took one last piece of buffalo check ribbon and tied it in a knot on one of the handles and then gave it a little dovetail. And here it is all cute and done. And I think it turned out really, really cute. It is festive and it's something completely different. And as you can see at the bottom, I placed some batting and some fiber fill in there to make it look like it's sitting on a little cloud of snow or something. And so let me know what you guys think of this. I was only able to put two projects in today because they were a little bit time consuming. But let me know what you think if you like these projects if you'd like to see more of them please leave me a comment you can hit that thumbs up button and share this video i really hope that you guys would consider subscribing if you're not already so that we can grow this channel and i'm so appreciative of all of the kind comments and words of encouragement y'all are leaving and so I hope everybody has a blessed day and always remember to be the light. Bye.